Well, Phyllis, I think you know very much um, how I, excited I was when you said that you were going to be prepared to do create a, a tarot for witches. And I remember you saying there wasn't one deck that you absolutely loved, and this was an incredible opportunity um, to put one together. So I was thrilled with that. I know you'd worked with tarot for so many years, and you know, and obviously bringing the idea of creating a, a tarot with involved witchcraft and, and all of your knowledge of both that tradition, you know, the Wiccan tradition and tarot seemed wonderful. So that was brilliant. And then I know it was an interesting journey, wasn't it? Because you were obviously wondering about who should do the artwork. And I know you, I remember you explored loads of different people. And, um, and um, we were certainly looking at our side really hard and not quite finding anybody who seemed quite right just not quite the right you know match for you or energetic configuration and we were looking for sort of a fresh art as well a fresh you know approach to the topic and um it's um you know extraordinary really because i know how many portfolios we'd looked at and then so weird that my partner you know who's an osteopath gets a patient who basically turns out to be an illustrator and not only that is a hedge witch based on Dartmoor. So the and you know that's I mean it was weirdly because it happened in just in the time frame and I, you know I don't think we'd had a discussion about the fact I was looking for an illustrator but but Danielle appeared which was incredible and then I and you know just it was sort of fun in terms of saying to you well there's that and I thought going to be interesting i mean it seems like the universe has sent her along but are you guys going to vibe and um you know so it was uh it was great and you know what how, you know what, what was the process can you remember what happened when you know i introduced you guys for, to to each other well already you had shared that story with me so you had primed the pump yeah right? <laughs> you know if a witch is anybody it's a person who's paying attention right, right? To the signs yeah. and the things. <laughs> And uh, they were there in abundance. So I, you know, I was, uh, and I looked at some of her art, which I thought was wonderful. Um, but the thing that did it, the magic that yeah. did it was uh, that I had journeyed when this um, opportunity, when you conceived this, because you are the mother of the project. <laughs> um, well, you know, the magic came yeah. first. From you, <laughs> I was sitting behind you. I was over the moon, and um, I thrilled. So I had journeyed, which is a, a universal shamanic technique. I was one of the I, the first um, to integrate it into Wicca, into witchcraft. Forty years ago, I was in the first core shamanic uh, group that came out of the academic work of Dr. Michael Horner. Now right. global, everywhere. But yeah obscure and it really influenced how i practiced uh, witchcraft wake up from the very beginning right. and so it's a marvelous tool it it works and it shifts your it opens your mind your heart your perception you enter realms of spirit you return to this world with all sorts of gifts and so i went and i asked my guides uh, what do i need to know to create a new witch's tarot um, I mean, I can tell you why I wanted to intellectually, and yeah. I will, but, but I, yeah. you know, I ask, what do I need to know yes. Yes. to create uh, a new deck that's going to be meaningful uh, to the world? And the answer was really clear. I was told, forget the elements, uh, forget the symbols, forget right. the symbols. start right. with the right. elements, uh, and they will show you what you need to know, what the world needs to know and ask and they'll show you. So uh, when <laughs> I had my first conversation with Danielle uh, over Zoom, it turns out she's 20 years younger than I am. Eh? <laughs> she journeys, she uses <laughs> the technique. It's everywhere now, just like witches, we're everywhere now. And she had journeyed before we spoke and she had asked, you know, what did she need to know to help create a new witch's tarot? And she was told, start with the elements, Amazing. not the symbols. <laughs> and they'll, they'll lead you forward. Right. So, you know, uh, that was, I was like, okay, done. It's this is clearly the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> when the divine speaks, 
if you're a good witch, yeah. you listen. So we, you know, she and she could listen, and um, and we got the same message. So that was it. Um, we were off and running, um, and uh, and it was terrific. I mean, it was just marvelous, and it was so valuable to me because typically, right. The author is given the project and will tell the artist what they want, draw right. this, draw that, blah, blah. Um, and the remarkable thing about journeying is that, especially when people do it initially, like any method of divination, like working with the tarot cards, yes, you, you doubt the message that you're getting, right? Yeah. You doubt the the objective reality yes. that's been shared. Yeah. You, you you doubt that you're actually hearing the voice of the divine. I've been doing it for 40 years, so I, I don't doubt as much as I used to. When I was <laughs> but nonetheless, to have somebody with whom one can journey yes. and have uh, shared experiences is profound and validating and deeply affirming. And um, even though the journeys weren't always the same, um, so yeah, but did you, yeah, because when you, where did you kick off? Because you said the elements. So did you start with one of the elements or how did you, what was yes. the process? So, um, oh, great yeah. so we decided that, you know, we looked at the time frame that we had. We wanted to complete the, the journeys and the work as best we could within a year's time frame. So we sort of scoped out, you know, you know, we need to do X amount per week. Yeah, per month. Right. Um, and uh, we were not going to try to journey at the same time. We had a six hour difference. She's a mom. She yeah. has house kids. And yeah. so she would have to grab the time as she could. Uh, but we knew we had a general time frame. So we started, uh, as instructed, uh, with the elements. We started with air. We started right. in the east, which is the direction in which a witch casts a circle, at least in the northern hemisphere. So we started in uh, the east with air. then. We went to fire, which is in the south, then yeah. water, which is in the west, and then we ended with earth and came back to east and looked at everything. Um, we journeyed for every single card and sometimes more than once. Yes. Um, sometimes I journeyed and she didn't have time. Sometimes she journeyed, then I would journey into what she had seen or she would journey into what I had seen. Um, we would write our notes and share them, yeah. read them, and then uh, conversate regular uh, Zoom calls, which we said we were going to record and didn't and should have. Well, you should have, oh, absolutely. No. <laughs> well, you really should have. The yeah. conversations were extraordinary. It was amazing to see that we had had, when we had similar journeys or yes. similar uh, symbols or messages or the same terrain, um, often if they were not exactly the same, you needed to put the two journeys together to fully understand what was happening. Right. Was oh, that's, that's extraordinary. Sure. I mean, obviously yeah. you, because you're coming from sort of the Wiccan, you know, and high priestess of the Wiccan tradition. And, you know, obviously with Danielle's background, living here on Dartmoor with the Moors, the Earth, but Hedgewitch, very, mm -hmm you know, different, very different in sort of the, the structural, the archetypal energies that you're connecting to, but you found a meeting point, obviously. Yeah. Well, I'm not a typical Wiccan priestess. So <laughs> we are both, we both have a similar um, method and a similar perspective. We are shamanic in our yeah. approach. We yeah. um, use similar technologies, uh, spiritual technologies, to open ourselves to the sacred, um, to enter realms of spirit, and to see the world that we're living in as sacred. I'm a philosopher yeah. um, and an Aquarius, and um, and a mystic, truly. And yeah. she, she's a you know she is a Virgo. Yeah, so it would seem yeah. as if we're very different, but we fit together perfectly. Just yeah. right? and it was a it, part of the blessing. There were so many blessings received from this process but one of the great blessings was friendship that we became friends and um yeah so that was extraordinary so we made the we did a it was and it was an epic adventure yeah, it was yeah. Good to have a companion on an epic <laughs> quest. we did about 200 journeys i would say all told uh with repeats and going back right and right repeats. and um and we did the majors yeah. She was very emphatic about this. Yeah. It had to be done in 22 days. Right. 
and uh, it, so we were in a permanently altered state. <laughs> Part with me, I don't know how she managed with children around the house, but, <laughs> but we did the majors in 22 days, and that was extraordinary. And it right. was deeply personal. Yeah. There were journeys that were were very personal, um, but always a um, a universal teaching, uh, a teaching beyond um, the significance that it had for us as individuals. Um, and on occasion, a few occasions, it was, it was quite profound and very deeply moving to share that. But always we were shown the greater wisdom that needed to be known and uh, to be shared. And we, early on, it was like, okay, her job was to show, to make uh, what needed to be shown and my job was uh, to share what needed to be known and I was getting volumes of, of poetic interpretation uh, through the journeys which was unusual for me lots of language but it made sense because um, I was the writer it was amazing um, it was an I, absolutely amazing journey sorry I didn't oh. want to cut you off though I was just thinking about it you're because I know when you just talking about the major arcana there and obviously as you started to work through that, something really radical and profound happened. And in terms of, because you know, I guess there's me sitting thinking, oh yeah, they're gonna kind of follow the sequence of the right of weight and you know, that's gonna be how, how it is. But, and suddenly I see some of the images coming through and just tell me what happened with that. How did, how, how did the right of weight get turned on its head? Because it's a, a, a wonderful journey. All right, Let, remind me to come back to the miners because they prepared. Oh yeah. Okay. Why well, no, no. Explain it. Go for that. To you know, to describe how they did, how they set that up, because that's. Yeah. Um. So we, you know, as of course, as we're doing this, Danielle had only had one tarot reading in her entire life right before we uh, began the project. That's so amazing. Right. <laughs> She had done an oracle deck, which is gorgeous, but she never, she no. wasn't really with tarot, yeah. which turns out to be terrific because you don't want to bring uh, too much. And it was the same yeah. thing. Like, okay, we'll follow the basic structure of, of the tarot. Let's just see where it goes. Right away, it was very clear. You know, don't do symbols. Do the, work directly with the elements. And it, right away, it became clear. In the Rider Waite deck, the uh, elements are used as metaphors for the human condition. That's why they're yeah. symbols, right? So um, the air is the mind, and mm -hmm. fire is willpower and determination, um, struggle, um, and the swords are the mind, and lots of neurotic. Mm -hmm. If you actually look at the Rider deck, it, it's like, you know, every single thing involving the mind is some kind of neurotic problem. Right? Um, when you really look, it's like, you know, I never realized every single thing. Um, and then you move on to fire it's the, with the staffs, and it's very right. And, um, yeah. and then you get to water, it's cups, and it's all about emotions and relationships and feelings. And the earth is money yeah. and work and business. Yeah. Um, with, with the, and they're metaphors for human life. And that's one reason I'm, uh, Pamela Coleman Smith did a brilliant job. She's the one who introduced the human scenes. And it makes the deck incredibly useful for understanding the human condition, for understanding our lives, and also for sort of foreseeing what's going to happen down the road. You know, yeah. if you put yourself in this direction, that's where you're gonna end up, right? right. If you're thinking this way, then you're gonna act that way, that way, yeah. and yeah. the result totally. would be the following. Mm -hmm. right. Really helpful, and it's helpful to people because people want to know about their lives. So it's been a brilliant deck. It's the most popular deck in the world, and it's become- It, it is, and um, a starter right. deck, you know, for most people. But go, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Starter deck, and it's also the foundation for virtually every deck that's ever been created, including- Absolutely. Kids, including most witches' decks. You know, right. they may put on a pointy hat or yeah. give you the horn god instead of the emperor, but it's essentially the same deck. Most definitely. Well, right away, the elements were like, no, we're not metaphors for your reality. <laughs> you know, we're right. active. we have our own reality. And in fact, you are us. You know, we're not That's metaphors right. for you. We have lessons 
for yourselves about who we are because who we are is a part of who you are. So we were paying very careful attention and the animals were amazing teachers and the, and the plants were incredible teachers and there were spirits of place and the spirits of all those we had immediately, you can see I'm wearing fox. We had guides who appeared, so we had fox who took us traveling all through the deck and grandmother toad who was this incredibly wise and ancient loving maternal presence and but also you know a little tough love and the briar rose which taught us about challenges and beauty in you know a different kind of spirit. and the mycelium which are you know the the network of mushrooms uh, that connect all things that were teaching us about the interconnectedness of all of creation and consciousness so we were getting lesson after lesson after lesson from our our kin our family the members of our family that we have forgotten who had all these lessons about where we are and who we are and they were deeply sacred lessons and over and over again they would we would see challenges but we were always shown how to solve them right. how to heal how to uh, how to achieve nourishment and over and over again um there were there were blessings it was a blessing path and it was clear by the end of the elements that what we were being shown was that we have access to the divine in realms of spirit um, and that spirit is speaking to us through whatever method of divination we're using especially a tarot deck yeah. and divi divine mm -hmm. it's an oracle it's the divine that's talking to you and there were these guides and spirits talking to us, talking to the world through the images and through the text. Uh, and what they were saying ultimately was that you live in a sacred world and that world is organized in, in infinite interconnections that are there to sustain you and nourish you and encourage you and heal you and help you, which led us to the major arcana. So we had this sense of the holiness and the magic and the love, the energy of love that pervaded creation that was there for us if we just would take off the blindfold and see it. And I, it, I was rem reminded, you know, there's in, in both old myths, Greek myths, and also in the Bible, right? There's this idea that you can't see God because if you right. see God, you'll go blind. Yeah. It's too much, right? Yeah. So there have to be these layers between yeah. you and the divine. And in this, this journey and in this deck, the messages of the deck are not, not at all that, that revelation will heal our blindness, that we haven't been seeing the world as it actually is, as, as an embodiment of what's divine. We've been seeing it as not divine and so we're wrecking it. But if you work with the deck and the spirits in the deck, the teachers in the deck, they will show you over and over and over again how divine the world that you're living in is and how much it is meant to love and support and sustain and nourish and give you a life of creativity and abundance and well-being. And so revelation actually heals our blindness. And it's a healing deck. We, it really truly is a healing deck. It's a witch's deck because yeah. witches have always been healers. So we were ready. It was like, okay, the, 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 we, were, we were ready. We had been shown this great teaching in all these different amazing ways, magical things over and over again, magic, 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 of how to work with the natural world, which witches have always done for transformation and fulfillment and all these things. Okay, we're ready. Well, we weren't imposing, you know. Danielle couldn't because it wasn't her thing, so she wasn't bringing a lot of baggage. No. I could because I. <laughs> but we were, you know, okay. What do we need to know to uh, to travel into the major arcana? And the first journey was a shock. I know because we sent it to you, and you were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was. I was shocked. I think, you know, my Capricornian kind of, you know, love of tradition in the best possible sense yeah. was what 
oh my god really you know because <laughs> it was it you know it was so it was iconoclastic you know but i was thinking you know where are you because you just i hadn't been with you in that part of the journey and suddenly i you were in such a a different space and a different vision and it was fascinating but i know and it'd be lovely if you talk a little bit about i think it was the world card that particularly i saw that i think you because you said about three or four of the major arcana and the world card i it was a shock and i'd love you to explain um, a little bit about the seeing around the world card but then realizing when i read your description of the cards and i understood and match those two things oh goodness you know it was such a um profound journey that you guys were on and such an important um transmutation of the energies of of the weight major arcana so uh extraordinary uh, no please yeah i was uh we have to I'm sorry i shocked you <laughs> yeah, no not at all it shocks good shocks good it kind of takes it takes you out of that kind of uh okay i know what they're gonna do kind of complacent that was right. super it was actually super exciting but uh it just okay. was uh there was a moment of hesitation there great <laughs> 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 so i i didn't know the whole point of this right was to be open uh, to yeah. being shown um, not to superimpose what you already knew. I, and part of my excitement when you originally um, proposed this project was that, I mean, I have used, I became a witch because of a to tarot reading, you know, by a witch. And it led uh, me to, to, uh, to study witchcraft, which I would never have imagined. <laughs> so I know there, how- there, I, there you were as a New York lawyer. That's just, in, you know, fascinating as well, kind of. And suddenly you realized, yeah, uh, you know, you had to make that transition. I mean, it's lovely to hear that as well. So, uh, uh, what, what, what opened up, that up? Oh, it was, yeah, that's a story. We'll yeah. that. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it was the last place in the world, but it was a terror. Yeah. So I know. Right, right, right. right. Oh, no, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can yeah. change your life. I mean, it can change your life Absolutely. every day with a one card pull that helps you to realize, first of all, that the divine is talking to you and is with you and is present with you. To me, that is one of the most gorgeous gifts that that um a tarot or any divination but certainly a tarot that will give you that there's this moment of communion not just communication but communion that, this, the, that you've asked and the divine has answered you and the answer you get is always always in your best interests yeah. and to have that companionship all day as you're entering a day it can be an amazing experience um, on a daily basis mm -hmm. so um so, so, you know, so I love the Turo. I, I love it. And it's been a helpful tool personally, and it's been a tool that I've used to help other people. Um, so I, I value it tremendously as a method of divination, as a way of speaking to the divine and getting great guidance. But the things about it that um, I've never liked, I've, I've never, and, and you find them, um, in all the thousands of decks from the cats to the comic books, <laughs> you know, that yeah. are based on the Rider deck. It's the, it's, it's the gold standard. Yeah. My alchemical pun. Um, <laughs> but yeah. it's whatever, you know, and even though a lot of witches decks, although they've sort of made some changes and they generally throw out the devil, but the, it's still basically the Rider deck. So I, the crucifixes, the, the angels, the churches, the the fig, the judgment card with the figures rising out of the grave, the yeah. chariot, which is a, a marvelous card with lots of meaning, is an Abrahamic yes. spiritual yeah. concept. Yeah, um, and certainly judgment, the depiction of uh, the idea, the idea of judgment, you know, um, is uh, Abrahamic. It's biblical. It's God judging you. Uh, and the rising out of the grave, you know, it comes from the Bible. So, um, and the, the, the hierophant in yes, the yes. papal garb the, of religious institution, and it's not the Catholicism per se, it's a, he, he personifies um, religious authority and, and institution and certain kind of, a certain kind of tradition. Um, things like that and the devil of course <laughs> who has no place 
in witchcraft and was projected on to the old religion and created such havoc and devastation of the old indigenous traditions of Europe, um, which is a 5,500 year old word. It's, a, it's the shamanism of our ancestors that came across the Indo-European steppes across Europe and finally with the Anglo-Saxons into Britain where it really took root, took on a, a particular cultural shape. Um, and then had this modern rebirth, but, but the, you know, the projection of the devil, there is no devil in witchcraft. So it had no place in, a, in our deck. We don't have a personification of evil. Uh, not, you know, it's a spirituality that sees everything as an expression of the divine. So there's like, except for this, no, that doesn't work. You know? <laughs> doesn't fit our cosmology or our experience. So those were, in my mind, you know, but I was remaining open. And I was like, I was curious. The best way to go on an adventure, open-minded, curious. What were we going to see? But I sure didn't expect what we saw. What I saw, I mean, it was very intense, very powerful. I thought, I anticipated that I would start with the magician. Right, um, right. Who is a patriarchal idea of, of magic that, you know, a male figure commanding all of the elements. It's an old ceremonial idea of controlling creation. But it's patriarchal. It's biblical. It's like man is in charge. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Look <laughs> 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 yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially right now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let's, not, let's, not, let's not go there. But yeah. I, well, <laughs> I figured we were going to go there, and I was going to have a conversation with him, right? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe his approach wasn't such a good one. But that's not where I was. I was in the world, and it was on fire, and part of it. Yeah. There was a metropolis, a, a sort of a city in the sky on a hill on, on fire. And there were people leaving the city and they were going out into the natural world. And, um, and it was very, very powerful and very distressing. And yet, as I bore witness to it, um, I realized I was seeing the world as it truly is. And when you look at the, the world is the last card in the right yes. away. Yeah, and yeah. it's a figure flo floating in space and come through a, usually a yeah. wall, yeah, yeah. connoting victory and, you know, yeah. Yeah. enlightenment, <laughs> surrounded in the four corners by symbols of the archangels. Yes. That's the world, but it's like, where's the world? No world. Right. Floating in space. Where's yeah. the world? It's, it's not, it's, it, and it is, there's a message in it. There's a message of, of um, detachment, in fact, from the corporeal world and from time and from matter. It is a statement of transcendence and of an immortal principle. Yeah. Well, there's wisdom in that, but there's also not such, there's a lot of not wisdom in that. Um, the the notion that we achieve enlightenment by leaving the world behind yeah. is precisely what's gotten us into the disastrous, uh, all these crises that we're facing now with the environment and the economy and the failure to deal with the COVID-19 properly and economic and racial and, and um, misogyny, all these injustices are a result of our thinking we're in charge. Yeah. Like yeah, we're the yeah. magician who can manipulate everything. And it's okay if we destroy all this because really the divine yeah. is someplace else. Yeah. It's energy. It's not yeah, yeah. bodied. Yeah. And so we started where the rider deck ends. And instead of it being disembodied, it was full on. This is it. This is the world. The not such good part, which is the what humans have created, that the city, yeah, right, yeah, this yeah. and the natural world that you're actually a part of, but that you are, have been oblivious to, because you've been going this way yeah. instead of down and in. Wasn't sure, but then the next journey was, there's a figure in the world that this, is, this was the genius of yeah. uh, Danielle, was her ability to bring this 
this visual interpretation to the experience. We would discuss, decide the meaning, and then find the moment in the, in the journey for both the elements and the majors that captured the essence of the journey yeah. and the, the image that had the teaching in it. Yeah. And, but then she brought her, 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 in quite a number of these cards, she brought that unique gift of hers. And so she put the primary figure who we didn't really know who she was yet yeah. uh, in the foreground. Yeah. And she's so British. She's got the hat <laughs> on her back and the head. Hat and she's wearing those sensible hiking boots. Right? So British. <laughs> ready to go, right? <laughs> Trudging <laughs> away. She's yeah. equipped, you know, right clothes, good shoes, into the, into the uh, countryside, the beautiful yeah. natural environment, yeah. which yeah. is, you sense, but you don't fully see it, right? It's like no, no, there, no, no, it, no, it, it, it awaits. And, and then in the next journey, there she was, um, she's taking the pack off, She's washing her face and drinking water, and there are little foxes who are tearing at her pack, yeah. and badgers carrying off yeah, her boots, yeah, and yeah, the crows yeah. pulling her hat off. <laughs> and it was very apparent to me. Uh, I understood because yeah. I, you know, I know the tarot. I was like, oh, that's that's the card that takes the place of what once was judgment. Yeah. There's no judgment here. There is the, pre the preparation to make this great journey, this adventure into, into life, into yeah. the world, into the mystery that, yeah. that we're going to go discover. And she's a little plump. She looks yeah. plumper. And it was amazing. So we went, um, not backwards, but we backwards we went in the opposite direction yes yes you reversed the order which yeah, far yeah. You know, the first time in the history of the major yeah. arcana we go from the world yeah into the world yeah and it was a and yeah and we'll talk more about it it was extraordinary extraordinary yeah, yeah. um you know i guess you may encounter some people perhaps who react initially like I did, sort of traditionalists. Um, are, you, are you worried about people getting rattled about that or getting, you know, um, people asking you, you know, why and, uh, and um, <laughs> feeling sort of some kind of frustration with that with you? Or? I, I don't think so. I mean, I'm dying to hear what Rachel Pollack thinks. You know, she's the, yeah. one of the geniuses and the leader of the humanist movement, and um, and you know, she wisely. I'm probably I'm paraphrasing her, but she wisely said a while back, you know, that divination methods uh, will give you uh, messages, but what they what they tell you uh, reflects the value system. Mm. You know, so the divine is speaking to you, but it's a human tool that's been. Yes, created. we create the the phone or the microphone or the you know the laptop through which the divine speaks, and so yeah. we're coloring the message yeah. through the values that we bring. And the Rider deck um, was radical for its day, but it but um, and certainly played in uh, the Golden Dawn from which that deck came. Absolutely. Played Important role in the revival of, of contemporary Wicca and witchcraft, um, and began the process of bringing us um, back into a sacred world and showing us how we had access to it. That it wasn't just religious professionals, but that we all had a capacity to be connected to the divine. Um, but it was still kind of patriarchal, and it was Victorian, and it was kind of Abrahamic. And the message in those decks is that. Enlightenment comes by leaving the world behind. Mm -hmm. So we're not, I'm, this deck is not intended to replace the Rider Waite deck, yeah. the Rider Waite Smith deck, um, because it, it, there's wisdom in it. And there's, there is a trans, we come from spirit, we return to spirit. There is a transcendent aspect of spirit, but spirit isn't just energy and isn't just elsewhere. Spirit is, embody is light uh 
particle or a wave? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is this is this is say you know is the sacred energy or embodiment? Yes. You, know, you can't have one without the other. We've made a wreck of things by thinking it's someplace else and something else and yeah. just energy and just light. We've missed the whole the whole magic of life that that the divine is embodied and yeah. in the embodiment is all this wisdom and beauty and truth and guidance and healing and wholeness. And um, so I think some traditionalists will get rattled, but we're not trying to replace the writer and, and throw it out. We're just saying there are things that we're missing. There's another aspect of, of um, enlightenment that comes through into the world and through life and into the heart of our humanity, into the, uh, into the beauty and the wonder of creation. And, and it is the most important lesson right now, as yes. their lesson was so important 120 years ago, 100 years ago, this lesson is the lesson that is vitally important, which is wisdom, the earth's wisdom, the earth is the embodiment of the divine, the wisdom of the land, is um and the creatures that live with us who are our relatives um that wisdom is the wisdom that we most need right now um and you can't fully understand yeah a journey out unless you understand the journey in right okay. i think that's a lovely segue for this and um could you talk a little about the card that's sitting right behind you right now because i know that's incredibly important I really love her, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> I, mean, I love them all. I love them all. I love the, I, you know, but of course I have my favorites. Um, and that is one of them. And we should talk a little bit more about some of those fabulous cards. Um, the pilgrim, so the pilgrim appeared in that, in the world, in the, in the very first moment and made the journey and uh, through the major arcana. Um, and we discovered that just as the elements were sort of telling us that the world we live in is sacred and it's, it's in with, it's part of us and we are part of it. Um, and there are different ways of living and being and being fulfilled and making magic, um, that we need to learn and we need to know where we are in order to know who we are. The major arcana and the pilgrim made the journey of discovering what our role is, yeah? what the purpose of life is for each of us and for all of us. And um, so she makes the journey. Uh, and actually it was fascinating because um, we were able to identify her. She kept her, he, them kept appearing with um, a, a, a pentacle. It was a, apple slice turned out it was a slice yes. of apple and uh there were five spaces for five seeds in it and as uh we encountered the figures uh who the the teachers uh in the and the figures having the adventures in each of the major arcana it was the pilgrim who either is not seen and is interacting with the figure or is the figure in yes. the Montana, and she kept shape shifting. <laughs> wow! So, um, so she was uh, uh, seemed a more mature and heavy set, uh, you know, plump figure yeah. in the in the initiation, the second yes. moment. Yes. And then she appeared. Uh, we did the luminaries. So we were like, oh, okay. So next came the sun, and there she was as a young black like a teenager like yeah. right on the cusp of manhood yeah 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 not a boy but not a man and right on the cusp with the pentacle where yeah. like, oh that's how we begin we didn't realize yeah. we began to recognize that this uh, appeared again um as the star remarkable uh this was this was uh um specifically that's always been a very personal card for me, but it, it was an early journey that Danielle did and it was incredibly powerful for her. So we went with her 
yeah. her part of the journey. Um, I described mine in the wisdom text, uh, uh, the continuation of yes. it, with the figures immersed in the water. Yeah. Traditionally, she's standing sort of detached and pouring water yes. Yes. Land yes. into the water. And here she is full on, she is immersed up to here. Yeah. Um, it was extraordinary. And then, it, you know, there she is again. And it's a, it, it was a transgender person at one point. And it was an older black man. Yeah. Uh, in the offering card, which is a radical change from the hanged man. Yes. Sacrifice, yeah. where there's pain and suffering, and he has yeah. to get up an eye, and he's hanging on the tree. This is a very different energy. The energy of um, that was encountered again and again, as the pilgrim changed race and age and ethnicity um, and encountered teachers that went from the Arctic circle to Africa and from yeah. the Indo-European steppes to um, the, the uh, Southwest of the Americas. Yeah. We were like, we're getting um, this tremendous diversity. Yeah. Are people going to be, uh, feel like we're culturally appropriating? We're like, no, cause we're not. We're yeah. having, encounters with teachers who are showing themselves and sharing and teaching and they are who they are yeah. and so our job was to pay attention um to respect them and what they were sharing and to share that with the world so that's what we did we hoped that we would have a deck of diversity but we did not superimposed we didn't say oh it would be nice to have um the priestess uh be a, a woman of color yeah. no when i journeyed into the the um priestess it was unambiguous i met the very first priestess who had appeared to me mm -hmm. um 40 years ago as the messenger of the goddess isis it was the libyan sibyl one of the great sibyls of the fertile crescent that out of which Western civilization arose. And she had come to me in dream after dream after dream and was the sign that, that told me I should go work with this group of witches. And, um, and there she was, as I was completing this project with Danielle, there, you know, there she was, she had reappeared as the priestess. The particular interpretation that, the visual interpretation um, is more uh, in keeping with what Danielle saw, how Danielle yeah. saw her in what she was doing. Yes. Um, but, um, but that's, you know, so yeah. that's what she yeah. was. So that's who she is. Um, and then at the end, we came to the Council of All Beings. Yeah. yeah. That takes the place of the um, takes the place of the magician. Yeah. And it's very different. And it, throughout the Major Arcana, instead of the tower, for example, which is God's lightning yeah. shattering the tower and sending yeah. people to the rocks below, you know, and you know, when God intervenes, yeah. right? Pay attention. Instead, we have the maze. And yeah. it's the same idea that you're not in control, you know, yes. that you have to let yes. go. But the energy is very gentle. Instead of the devil, which is very much about sort of selfishness and attachment um, and the limitations, right, that are yeah. imposed, um, we, we met the ancestor. And that was a very moving card for me because yeah, I encountered uh, one of the 13 indigenous grandmothers with whom I traveled many years ago when I was having um, a great series of adventures subject of next book and <laughs> and she gave me a blessing and so there she was in my journey and I sent Danielle um, a picture of her and he said I you know yeah this yeah. is this can you draw her it would be a great uh, blessing um, to evoke her and she worked on it, she worked on it, she worked, and she got it. Um, yeah. and she really captured her. Very different energy. It is about uh, wounds, 
inherited wounds, but it's about how one gives thanks to one's ancestors and releases, forgives and releases the past and takes responsibility for yourself to create your future. The, the chariot is gone, will, you know, that control <laughs> that we have. Nope, it's all gone. And instead it's the journey. And Daniel worked on that one again, and again, and I was like, it's great. It's perfect. She had the, she had the transgender person, the pilgrim as yeah. a trans was, was really fluxing in that one with a horse. Right. right. And yeah. their companions. So instead of, you know, controlling them through a chariot with willpower, dark and light, and I go forward, great card, lots of wisdom. Nope. This is, we're in this together. I have a lot to learn from you, you know? Um, and they were next to each other, looking out on this vast landscape, the, the journey of life that we go in, not knowing necessarily where we're going. And that, you know, it is a vast journey that we have to give ourselves to with trust. And the land will support us as we make that journey, which is the pilgrim. Mm -hmm. and, and she kept drawing it. And the, <laughs> and the pilgrim got further and further <laughs> and further away. Yeah. I was like, I love them. She's like, nope, that's what it's got to be. And finally, when they were like, like the size of raisins yeah. in, in, you know, in this vast yeah. landscape, then she's like, okay, that, that is the perspective. Um, so there was a different energy throughout the deck. And it really culminates with the pilgrim where she's made this journey. She comes into the council of all beings who are ancestors and spirits and pe indigenous peoples from all cultures and animals and the plant people. And she's invited into their company, sort of having made this journey into life to see the sacred in the world and in herself, to start to see it in herself. And she's met all these teachers from around the world who are so different, but all have these universal wise teachings for the, the magic and the blessing of life and how to live a good life. And she's welcomed into their company and they're quiet and they're gentle and they're laughing and they are aware, you know, they're coming from all parts of the world because the world is in crisis and we all need to work together now to make our magics, to change things. And, um, and Danielle had finished that card and her vision had been kind of, um, as if there was a veil over it. Mm. And so the figures were kind of ghost-like. And we, we, and I was like, that's not it, that's not it. But we, you know, she was tired, we were at the end, yeah. I didn't want to stress her, but I couldn't, you know, and I had a dream one night and it was like, they were talking, they're like, it has to, this, the last, it has to be done properly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I called her, I was like, listen, I'm sorry, but you've got to do it over again. Yeah. You've got to be vivid. They've got to yeah, all be there, you know, and she did it. She did a beautiful it's stunning job. card. Absolutely stunning and, card. And then yeah. we got her. And when yeah. I, it was one of my favorite cards to write because it's so different. The Fool in the Rider deck is oblivious. Yes. Not where, sure. Yeah where she's going about to fall off the cliff yeah, yeah. the dog hopefully will save her but she's in her own world she's naive and oblivious our pilgrim is not a fool she is firmly footed but right dancing mm -hmm. she's joyful she doesn't know what's on the other side of the hill right yeah, yeah. but all the paths of life are open to her and she can take them with this kind of open-hearted joy clear-sighted with a companion you know because we are we are always uh guided there is always divine partnership with us it's one of the things that that a tarot deck teaches you that divination teaches you that there's always um a, a wise guide there for you and she knows it and she knows that she's supported by mother earth beneath her feet by all of creation that is designed, you know, to create life and sustain life, that if she trusts that everything she needs to have this extraordinary life, this extraordinary adventure is being offered to her. And so she travels with joy, right. not knowing exactly what's ahead, but not needing to know because she knows everything that she does need um, is right there for her and will always be there for her. And um, it's a joyful conclusion to a very, adventurous, happy, different story. 
I think, oh, wonderful. I think that's a wonderful space to stop is the end of that journey, Phyllis. That's um, brilliant. Thank you so much. It's just been, it's lovely hearing that because I, being involved in the journey and listening as we've gone um, to what you've been created and the words that you've put together with the imagery. I can't recall a tarot that is more exquisitely written or more profoundly described. So um, just thank you. Thank you both for what you've created.